but there's not much say so from yourself here Ian you've, you've got some kind of choice as it's your potential third game you can either go to the random draw or you can call out one of the ultimate pool last man standing hitmen what would you like to do is Christy a hitman? He isn't, sadly. I can confirm Christy Caulfield is not a hitman. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow at some point, but sadly you can't have him. Uh, random draw. Random draw. You never know. You never know. It might be here. Okay. So we go to the random draw. I think it's fair to say we all know who Ian Alley would like to play. But it goes down to the computer. Sir, computer, let's see who the fave's opponent will be as he looks to go three in a row. Luke Gilbert! <laughs> in he comes. Just the, the situation. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that's probably right. Although those, those money games between Ian and Shane, obviously they've, they've both won some, so they've, I suppose, got a lot of respect. So, I mean, I guess Ian knows he'd have had a tough game with that route as well. Yeah, of course. I mean, it goes without saying whoever he had, he'd have a tough game. But what point I'm trying to make is, would you rather, you know, pick that match against Shane or have the risk playing, you know, would he... I guess it's... it's look, he's got Luke Gilbert, he could have got Tom Cousins, so he's not going to be, you know, and he's not going to be too worried whoever he got. It's just... Uh, well, we're here to ask those questions, aren't we? Yeah, and I mean, obviously he'll judge it based on how this goes. If he beats Luke, he'll, it'll look like a, a no-brainer. But if he doesn't, he'll be asking himself, should he have done something different? I guess all he needs to do is have four chances, and then it's down to him. Can he take those four chances to win this match? Certainly has a very good first chance. Point that's definitely true is there's going to be a lot of established pros out in this crowd desperately rooting for a Luke Gilbert win because that means he'll choose and they they probably know there's a fairly sh small shortlist of who he's likely to choose whereas if Ian wins a random draw and two more people have the chance to be in that last game of the night yeah it's a really interesting one it's that horrible time and it happened last year as well where that last match ended up going to a random draw both players coming out Phil Harrison taking on Rona McCarthy and it went all the way to a six red shootout as well players want to avoid that they'd rather Luke was picking than any sort of random nature Ian doesn't know Ian wants to win this match get himself done and dusted and see you tomorrow he'd be in the hot seat how about uh, Ian winning this match and the last match of the day being Callum Singleton versus Carl Sutton the two players that have occupied, uh, occupied the hot seat all day that would be cruel <laughs> Yeah, there's some entertaining permutations. No one wants to be in that last game. I, mean, I think the, the players that have come out, like Ian, I think he's actually timed his run pretty well this evening. He was called out at a good moment. Getting called out in that sort of overnight spot where you risk losing before the end of the day, that's not great. You risk having to come back in the morning, still not in the hot seat, that's not great. Oh, how about that for a break? It's going to get another one. Another two. Another three. That's <laughs> insane. Wow, just the calm six balls off the break. How about that? And I tell you what, the red-yellow plant into the centre is hurting him. In other rule sets, you'd be down playing the red-yellow plant and you'd be away. Can't do that here with international eight ball rules. It's actually a trickier finish than it could have been if more balls had stayed on the table. Sometimes that's the way. More balls is actually easier, but didn't that look spectacular? Well, he's missed that. So, first chance for Luke Gilbert. Not ideal, as we were saying, to get called out at this point, but he's got to get his campaign going somewhere. He's going to have to play for the rest of the night and still come back tomorrow morning to play some more if he wants to stay in this tournament. It depends how you approach it, though, doesn't it? As you said, it from Ian's perspective, he knows if he wins this match, he's a, a good few uh, couple of matches into tomorrow before he has to worry. From Luke Gilbert's perspective, he, he's in, in the tournament here where he'd have to win two matches tonight, come back to win tomorrow morning, but then he would be guaranteed, if he was able to do that, to have at least three matches off. 
all of a sudden you're very deep into the prize money, you're very deep into the tournament, you can start to see the, the finish line. So, you know, obviously a terrible time to be called out, but the benefits and the, you know, the rewards of playing well for the final two matches here is, is actually really high. Yeah, that's a very good point. Plus, of course, with the top players, I mean, they're here to win by playing. We sort of joke about, you know, a few people, you could have a, a lucky run where you don't play much, but that's probably more of an issue for the, the qualifiers who it's a novel experience playing out on this table. Someone like Luke, he's well used to winning all the matches required to get through a tournament. See the hashtag on the back of his shirt, Team Blessed. Not quite been blessed with the position, so he's going to have to come out with a shot here. Oh, oh no. What a fluke. What Will he be on it? No. Is he? Oh, it's tight. I think that tells us he is, because he's just held up his hand just to acknowledge. Yeah, that was a huge fluke. No, he's having to bend it just a touch. But not too bad. Oh, what a massive fluke. Well, I thought it was worth highlighting his nickname. It just felt like he was winding <laughs> up for a moment like that. Yeah, his season has just been extraordinary. Last year, every time he left the country, he seemed to come back with a load of silverware, the European and World Championships. And not only under-23 level, where he was totally clearing up, but also won the men's, under uh, men's European Championship. He's finished now with the under-23s, which I think the, the rest of the competitors in that age group will be very happy to hear. Has he made the the senior squad for the World Championships. I haven't seen, I mean, I know they've been announced, I just haven't seen it. Yeah, I think I'm right in saying that him and Dom Cooney are both in the, the England squad for that. I think that has to be a good thing for England. They Some fresh impulses into the team. Obviously, it was an established team and they always go very well, but it can only be a benefit to get two players at that level into the team. That's all for, for June. World Championships coming up here on Ultimate Pool TV in about well, five, six weeks' time, something like that. Gets away from Luke. He never really got hold of the cue ball in that visit. Always felt like he was chasing a couple of shots he played. So Ian gets a chance here in frame three. Big moment to this for Ian difference in outcome between winning and losing this match. Still only day one of the tournament, so a long way away from winning it, but actually winning this match just puts him in such a strong position to have a deep run well into tomorrow. Yeah, because the extra life. What do we go into tomorrow with the 17 players? So he's going to be... If he wins this match, he's guaranteed to miss the next three and therefore be you know, starting to sort of close in on that top ten, isn't he? He's uh, starting to get very deep. Going to play a total of 16 matches today. I've got one more after this one and back for the same tomorrow. That will get us down to our champion. Obviously going to be considerable added pressure as we get towards the latter stages of tomorrow. Big break now for Ian. Well, everything's going to be a letdown after making six on the previous break, but it's still very good. Yeah, it's to settle for two this time. In all honesty, though, the players would rather make two balls off the break than six every single time. Obviously, there's a chance you make six. You might, you know, you could have one pot and, a, and an eight ball, but it's very, very unlikely. It just doesn't happen. But if you make two or even one, 
you've got more balls on the table and yes more traffic but more balls to deal with that traffic whereas he had made six but he didn't really have a very easy finish on because of it Ian wasn't worried about getting down the table there just wanted to make sure he could play the plant next shot The way it's played this, it looks like the, the red does go past the yellow to the bottom left. It's quite tight, but it's got space. Oh, well, in fact, from that angle, it's not even as tight as it looks from the overhead. It's got a nice angle to track back across the table here. He hit that. He stayed down on the shot like he was worried he was going to flick the yellow and could be awkward. I mean, when he went bottom left before bottom right, I didn't think too much of it, but the natural just looked better to go the other way where you there was no traffic so one of those situations where a top pool player could have gone either way every time and not mattered but yeah I mean as long as he doesn't get called out he might just see the funny side of it but if he was to get called out for the last match that would be brutal Luke needs a ball needs it and he's not going to get it this could be quickly match over here for Ian well let's get back for a very entertaining last match of the night if we do go to that random draw Still a bit to be done. It's not an easy position to get started with. Looks like he's going for the long plant on the yellows. Mm, yellow's gone a little awkward. One of those, if he'd had a slightly easier opener, he would have been able to keep in perfect position. Had to focus just on the pot there and sacrifice the second yellow going a little bit safe. Well, that's an expansive way to try and play a loss of turn. It's not worked out for him. And Luke, who would have feared the worst when he broke dry, he's going to get back to the table. of time left in this match so Luke shouldn't feel like he needs to chase if he doesn't doesn't fancy and obviously he's got two really bad balls here at the top and the red covering the eight ball just gives him a little bit of just a, not a huge amount because we know in this rule set having a pocket isn't a big deal but just a little bit of freedom yeah you could see what Ian was thinking there but he helped the position from his perspective. It's never a nice position knowing that one mistake could be your last. It's going to be the tournament over if Ian does fashion a clearance at any stage. I think there is a bit of added pressure when you've been sat around all day. So I feel like you're quite invested in the tournament so when you do get your chance at the table you want to make the most of it so far Luke's going to feel that he hasn't quite done everything he could still not having any luck with this loss of turn effort he's had two goes at it now yeah has he left an angle for Luke here I don't think it's natural but if it is it's perfect just deal with the one at the top yeah that, it played at a really good pace he knew it wasn't quite the natural to get to the red and if he plays that any firmer he can't he'll go wider the yellow played the beautiful pace just to hold the natural line that was a really nice touch shot from Luke Gilbert and now he should go on and win the frame from here showed good experience of the table understanding how wide it's going to throw Sometimes you naturally put a bit more pace into shots like that but then the angle goes wider and you miss the cannon Still going to be a frame behind, but this is a good chance for Luke to get back into this match. I 
Although it doesn't look a huge gap that he's going to have to play for here. At least he's got reasonably good control. Just able to leave the thin edge of the red. Well, in fact, he wasn't. He had to play at cushion first. That does just as well, though. Yeah, possibly the worst frame of Paulie and Ali has played in three matches there. Well, the numbers are going down. Six in the first break, two in the second break. Only one this time, but one's enough for him. Yeah, and this is a much better leave than it was when he made six. Much, much better leave. Just a one yellow maybe that's slightly awkward, but it's not really because of the yellow by the eight ball. The yellow may not pass the eight ball to the bottom left corner, but the one that's by the eight ball gives him access to right center. It's just a nice layout all the way round and won't be too much hope here for Luke Gilbert. Yeah, this is a much more straightforward chance than the one that went begging in the previous frame. The way he's been playing so far today, you'd say this is close to 100%, but of course, we all know the last frame you need is sometimes the hardest. Might just have to play this one with a trace, I'll just accept a little bit of angle. Yeah, just a little trace aside, just try and get down there, and that isn't the best of shots. The last two have not been brilliant from a position of being absolutely perfect. I mean, you still should get out. And he is still going to get out as well. What a brilliant performance from Ian Ali. Three and done. He is safely into the hot seat. The fave marches on. Take your leave, mate. Into the safety seat you go. Let's hear it for Ian Ali, everybody. He's gone three and out in the last man standing.